I think, I think this is where he played himself. Oh, 100%. I think he should have. Ruslan. Into that, guys, my name is Ruslan, and this channel exists to encourage you to master mind your business the master's way. May not be subscribed yet, so if you aren't, please hit that subscribe button as we are on the verge of cracking 10 thousand subscribers and i would love to celebrate that with you all right now let's get into the video graham stefan exposes the truth about his own coffee company and the undergirnings of influencers running small businesses and what it's really like trying to build a business in this whole new e-commerce ecosystem okay so if you guys don't know who graham stefan is finance channel he also has a podcast i think he also has a third channel and his content is genuinely pretty good I seen him on Dave Ramsey before, which was, which was super cool. But he gets into this video called The Truth About My Coffee Company. I screwed up. What's up, guys? It's Graham here. So two years ago, I made the decision to start my own coffee company. And this video is a prime example of what not to do because I'll admit I made some pretty stupid mistakes. For those unaware, the idea of starting my own coffee company really began in 2019 when a subscriber called in asking me to review his spending habits on my second channel, The Graham Stephan Show. During that call, it was revealed that he spent an exorbitant amount of money every single month at Starbucks. So I jokingly responded that he should just make it at home because my coffee costs 20 cents to make. Well, after posting that video, everyone began commenting about my 20 cent iced coffee. So it just became Pause like it? this recurring joke. This is this is brilliant. The way they launched this entire thing is amazing. Oh, I wow. wish I drank coffee because I feel like I mean, there's like they're like white labeling coffee nowadays. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. there's for, like companies that. Yeah, yeah. So Ugh. I think I think this is. I just don't drink coffee. I can never do anything like this. I just I want to do my own yerba mate someday because now I do stevia base that we yeah. can literally just show people our my my recipes. Which anyway, you can't white label <laughs> yerba mate. That ain't happening. You gotta yeah, have, yeah. you gotta have a plug for that. So he doesn't white label it. He actually goes and does it the the, the right way, in my opinion. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Open the channel as a way to save some extra money. Of course, I leaned into it, and a few months later, I created a complete tutorial about how you can make your own 20-cent iced coffee at home. And then I explained that if you just invested the difference from what you would have spent at Starbucks, that savings would eventually add up to a $1.2 million nest egg by the time you're older. And that was initially That's it. Crazy. Until a The amount of money people spend on coffee is gross. It's crazy. $6, $7 a coffee? And people people do it every single day. Every single day they hit the drive throughs and 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 so Graham rightfully so. If you just take that money and you put it in a growth stock mutual fund, you put it in an index fund, you put it in a Roth, you're gonna be worth millions. Oh yeah. What well, isn't by that logic? Isn't by his logic and this conclusion that everybody could be a millionaire? Yeah. Totally. I mean, over a 40 year, 45 year Over a 40 span. year period, yeah. Another subscriber reached out to me who specializes in selling, shipping, and manufacturing physical products like snacks, foods, and sauces. He explained that he already owned his I own wish facility. Like he that has reached out to me. I wish someone like that reached out to me. Yeah, we need that plug. If you're watching this, Graham Stephan's guy, can you reach out to me, please? Go ahead. The team ready. He has a marketing plan, and together we could create a one of a kind coffee business. And we decided to do it. From that point on, we taste tested dozens of coffees to find the perfect blend. We went back and forth on names and branding, and we had dozens of revisions with graphic designers to come up with a theme that was not only fun, but also fit the aesthetic of something that saves you money without being Pretty cheap cool. and flimsy. And after a few months and a frivolous trademark threat against our previous name, we eventually came up with the concept of bankroll coffee. Now, here's the thing I want to be clear that Jeez. I never so Genius. good such a good concept a good way to do coffee a good way to do a product that actually blesses your audience like this is what i know a lot of issues people got uh issues with business people capitalism consumerism whatever this is how capitalism could be a good this is how small businesses are good ideally this is how it's supposed to function hey i'm gonna sell you a product that's actually going to save you money and help you mm-hmm so you don't got to go to Starbucks. I'm going to teach you how to use this product so you get to help yourself. Like that's a win-win-win for everybody, right? I love everything about how they launched this product. Go ahead. Any sort of e-commerce business like this ever. To me, all of this was completely new. And even though my business partner had extensive experience in online sales, I quickly began to realize that the cost of selling something as simple as coffee quickly begins to add up. For instance, do you want your order shipped in a really fancy box? Well, that'll be <laughs> no, a few extra. No, no. You guys get your orders in a white bag. <laughs> Dollars. Do you want shreds you know of why? paper gently? You know why? Because of everything Graham Stephan is about to tell us now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Nesting your coffee within the box? Well, that'll nope. be an extra 25 cents in increased packaging time. Nope. Or how about nope. custom packaging on the envelope? Nope. That'll be an extra nope. dollar on top of that. Nope. As you can see, very quickly, the break-even price on coffee could be as high as $14, meaning if you do everything that I could to pass the savings back onto the customer, because I just thought all the packaging is going to be thrown away right. anyway, right. so why pay for it? I just really wanted to design and build a coffee around something I would That's buy right. and drink myself. And after a lot of tinkering, eventually I think we did that. We found a formula that would give us the most cost-effective premium coffee locally 
roasted right before shipping, delivered straight to your door, while still being an ethically sourced, fair trade coffee that tastes Amazing. insanely good for the price. I mean, I'm drinking it now. However, even though that all sounds pretty good, here's where things started to go wrong. Initially, I gotta say, the whole thing was a massive success to the point where I was dumbfounded, because I initially launched the coffee by making a single video, and in the first 48 hours, we sold out of 10,000 bags that were meant to last us the entire month. In total, we earned almost- Shout out to Graham. I appreciate the transparency on the numbers too. Oh, yeah. Right? This is year one, basically, right? No, he said. No, month. this was the first month. Month. Amazing. March 9th to okay, it says March 9th to June 6th. First 90 days, that's what it was. Yeah. But yeah. he said the first month they they sold out of the first 10,000. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Again, this is how small businesses can and should be. This is how capitalism can and should serve people better. So, and, and kudos for him to, to show the numbers of month one. That's amazing. Go ahead. Almost $150,000 of revenue that equated to almost $30,000 in profit. But here's the thing. All of that money was reinvested back into the company to continue growing. All right. So what does that mean for the people that don't understand business? They see $145,000 on the screen yeah. and he said $30,000 of profit. What, what does that mean? That's a small margin. That's a very small margin. Right. In order to maintain any sort of healthy margin on a product that, that's going to sustain a business to, to pay for the talent, to pay, to put money in reserves for simple things like payroll and to be able to have payroll months in advance in case something goes wrong, you're not going to be able to do it on 25 percent margin. That's what he basically is saying. It was a 25 percent margin. That's not a healthy margin. I think found step one, you got to have your margins in order. you got to make sure that in my opinion, you're, you're at least attempting to double. Yeah. Most physical goods companies like this mm -hmm. and even bigger companies like, mm -hmm. um, will operate on a 30% margin. Yeah. That's, that's like, that's not, it's, it's light, but that's semi-standard below that you start getting in trouble. Well, he got in trouble. Yep. And then, but then he also invested that 30,000 reinvested it into the company. Yep. So when people say, see 145,000, they're like, Oh, they're like, Oh, he made all that money. No expenses. Yep. He made thirty thousand. Like, oh well, he still made thirty thousand a month. I was like, well, no, he still has to make another order right. for the next product. So, like, there's a lot of sacrifice yep. and discipline that goes in having a small business. That's right. You got to be able That's to reinvest right. that. Sit That's on right. It. First, that was also a huge success. Like, we spent some of that money retargeting viewers on Facebook and Instagram, and those are some of the highest returns I've ever seen. Like, we would spend a dollar and sometimes make three to five dollars back on That's every insane. dollar we spent. So That's really in the very beginning, insane. it was like a license to print money that was incredible with all the money being reinvested back into the company, which then got reinvested until things went wrong. The thing is, within a few months of launching, coffee prices went up by a lot. Brazil experienced a severe drought, which impacted mm -hmm. production. Winter frost made it even more difficult to ramp up supply. And as you would expect, our own coffee costs went up substantially. Pretty soon, mm -hmm. our profit margins went from about one to two dollars a bag to break even. And this is where I screwed up. I was at a cross. One to two dollars a bag was the original profit. Yeah. So all you guys think that like influencers are getting rich because they're selling you a product like they're not. No one. No one's yeah. making millions selling you their their merch, coffee, T-shirts. And if they YouTube. are, they probably deserve it. Yeah. But like if you're actually making millions, you're at the point where you've created systems, mm -hmm. workflows, you worked with companies, you've invested tons of money. Mm -hmm. You've like there's there's a process to that. Crossroads where we could either raise prices to remain profitable or we could just sell break even coffee for the sake of growing the business. I sold break even coffee for the sake of growing a business. <laughs> that meant that when you were buying the coffee, you're pretty much paying the exact price that it costs us. But I kind of thought to myself, oh, that's not that big of a I think this is where he played himself. Oh, 100%. I think he should have increased his prices. If you already have a, a, a base that's rocking with you, they'll understand. If you just tell them, hey, coffee prices went up. There's a drought in Brazil. <laughs> yeah. We, we got to make something this off is an of this. organic product. This product yeah. is literally grows. Yeah. And and, and we got to make something to sustain ourselves. Yep. If you want if you want this coffee company to be around, we have to make a little bit of money. And the, the professionals, the experts, never don't do the basics. Right. The basics in business is you have to make a profit. That's right. That's it. Concerned. Eventually, coffee prices are going to come back down and we'll start making some money. But uh, nope. Instead of coffee prices going down, they went higher. In addition to that, the cost of Instagram and Facebook ads went through the roof after an iPhone update that disabled tracking across platforms. So with dwindling profits, it didn't make sense anymore to run paid traffic. A lot of people lost their businesses when that iOS update came. I know a lot of folks felt good that they couldn't track your location anymore, but the reality is that uh, a lot of folks lost their business. I saw a lot of people really struggle, people who had their Facebook ads locked in. I'm so glad that we were not running Facebook ads at that time because when you could, the update basically made it where they couldn't track your, everything else you did on your phone. They couldn't track your app. They couldn't track your location. They couldn't track your interest. So it was harder to a new people in the funnel. Before that, 
you can convert people for less, right? Because a Facebook ad, you're trying to convert people. When that changed, and all of a sudden Apple came out and said, we're not going to allow Facebook to do these things, that really hurt a lot of people. People were also like, yo, I'm tired of Facebook and all these people tracking all my information. Stop it. Remember when you would say something in the background and then you would open Instagram, they'd be an ad for it? Remember you'd be having a conversation and you say something, you go to Facebook, they'd be an ad for it? That's what iOS changed. When that update came, that really hit the fan for a lot of people, a lot of business owners. As a result of that, we came to the realization that we either had to raise prices or we had to get really creative. And so I decided that we should get really creative. We looked at our overall order volume and quickly realized that we could offset the coffee loss by selling accessories like cups, metal straws, ice cube trays, and so on. This meant that it was an easy upsell for customers who were already placing an order, and those items had the profit margins that we could then use to keep the company running. Right. And it worked. For the first few months, accessories sold insanely well. and We had a returning customer rate of more than 50%, which is insane for any sort of e-commerce business. On top of that, from popular demand, we also decided to launch Bankroll T, which gave us a slightly higher profit margin that we could then use to reinvest into ordering even more stationary ahead of future. Yeah, see, I really want to build my own Yerba Mate company, man. I, I got to figure that out. Orders. But without running any sort of paid traffic or really any external marketing whatsoever, eventually sales began to fade. Now, sure, almost everybody stayed who was on the subscription model, which is incredible because it meant that they liked it enough to continue ordering on a regular basis. But just like any business, it requires constant promotion to continue growing. And Honestly, that's where I kind of fell off. Initially going into this, my goal was to be able to build something that could grow independently of myself. Like I see companies like Cars and Bids and Sour Strips do extremely well outside of the brands of Doug DeMuro and Max Chewing. So I thought I would be able to do something similar, except I severely underestimated just how much work it would take to get to that point. Admittedly, I let Bankroll Coffee fall to the side. It wasn't a priority of mine, and no one's at fault except for myself. Like just for some context here, throughout the last four years, I've practically done nothing other than focus on creating regular content throughout the three channels. Anything that didn't fall into that bucket was put to the side. I guess in the big picture, from a business perspective, that was the smart choice because all three of those channels more than tripled in size. But from a Bankroll Coffee perspective, that required more work than I had to give. And that was absolutely my responsibility in order to grow it. Looking back, by all means, I spread myself too thin. I was trying to do too much at the same time without giving myself a clear focus on what to work on. And with Bankroll, that became a problem. Now, here's what I found the most surprising from all of this. In the last year, despite zero active promotion or anything whatsoever, we still managed to do $65,000 in revenue. That meant that almost every single day, we're getting about $200 worth of orders simply from people who liked the product enough to order it again without any additional work on our end. That gives me a lot of confidence that if we could do $65,000 in sales without even talking about it, imagine- This is a great breakdown of this. I appreciate Graham for opening the books and telling people what it's really like running a business. And I think uh, understanding margins, understanding the opportunity cost, understanding the consistency, understanding the need to plan ahead, understanding the need to not build something on a faulty infrastructure like Facebook ads that can change with the change of an iOS update. Like there's so many great, 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 great lessons here. So much for watching that video. Guys, I believe that one of the best ways you can build a business is by first building a platform online. So Zach Sparazzo puts together a free training for you on the number one metric you can be looking for to explode your YouTube platform. Click the link in the pinned comment below so you can start that now. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.